or but I'll put them up there. So you have 2x minus 10x equals 16 equals 0. So remember, to solve for this, we want it, we got to put it in as far as the um, zero product property, right? We got to write, we got to pretty much factor factor this so we can get a times b equals zero. Something times something equals zero. So we got to factor this. Now, you went back to the method you've learned before, where remember though, oops, that's eight, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's the wrong problem. Two x minus ten x plus 8 equals 0. Because remember, to figure out what we were going to multiply by, we go 2 times 8, which gives us a positive 16, and then negative 10 on the bottom. So then, that helps us because we look at what factors multiply, what factors of 16 multiply to give us 16, and add to give us negative 8, which is a negative 10 and a negative 2. All right? All right, so that's perfect. But now, you got to remember, to get that 16, we had to multiply 2 times um, we had to multiply 2 times 8 to give us that 16, right? So these are not your true factors, and that's one of the most common mistakes that students will make is they'll say x minus 8 times x minus 2. Well, uh -uh. those would be the factors if it was just a, if that was just 16 right there, then mm -hmm. that, yeah, that'd work out. But we figured out when we did FOIL that this didn't give us our answer, right, or our original problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite 2x minus 10x plus 8 I'm going to rewrite it with these new terms. But what I'm going to do, that's a squared. No wonder that doesn't even make sense. Squared, I'm going to rewrite. Instead of saying negative 10x, I'm going to write negative 8x minus 2x plus 8 equals 0. Okay. Do you see where these two numbers came from? Mm -hmm. They just came from the negative 10. I just rewrote the negative 10x, but why did I? We could have done a lot of different things, right? We could have said 7 plus 3 or six and four, but we did eight and two because those two numbers multiply, or negative eight and negative two because those two numbers multiply to give us 16, and that's yep. what we wanted, right? right? So now, once we have it written like this, now what we can do is factor each one of these separately. So I'm gonna factor the first two terms, and I'm gonna factor the last two terms. This is what we call factor by grouping. So when I look at these first two terms, I can factor out a what? You can factor out a... What do these two have in common? A two. A two, and mm -hmm. what else? Uh, four, or a one. Two and a one. Um, now, what is the largest number that both that goes into both of them, that they both have in common? The largest number? Two. Two, okay, good. What about any variables? Do they share any variables? Uh, yes, x. Okay, and x to the largest power do they share? Uh, squared. That has an x squared? No. Just that. That it's one has X, right? X. So it's just going to be X. Good. So remember, if you figure out what one thing goes into them, then the next thing you got to do is you got to factor both of them. So I'm going to divide um, both these terms by 2X. All right? You figure out what one thing get. If I was, say, factor 6, you'd say, oh, well, six, 3 goes into 6. So to find the other factor, you take 6 divided by 3, and that equals 2, right? Mm -hmm. So if I know that 2X divides into both of those, I'm going to divide it by 2X, and I'll say 2X is one factor. And so what happens when I divide 2x squared divided by 2x? Well, I'm just going to be left with um, the 2's cancel out, x cancels out, and I'm just left with x. And then negative 8x divided by 2 is going to give me a negative 4. Follow me with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then for here, you got to look at what do they have in common. So here, now you're going to be doing the same thing. What can we factor out? 2 and... We, just a 2, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the main important thing that I want you to understand is if I just factor out a 2, that's still going to be positive. And, I, and if I'm looking ahead, I'm going to actually want to make that negative number negative. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to factor out a negative 2. Okay? So when I factor out a negative 2, what that gives me, that gives me now an x minus 4. And that's very important for you to understand that you could factor positive 2, but then you'd be left with a negative x plus 4. Mm -hmm. I want to factor out a negative 2 because I want these to be exactly the same. Why do I want them to be the same? Because now I can factor them out. So to factor them out, I'm just going to divide both terms by x minus 4. And what will happen is those will cancel out, and I'll be left with 2x. And the x minus 4 divided by x minus 4 would cancel out and be left with negative 2. Mm -hmm. So now I take a look at this and I say, all right, if I was to apply the, you know, um, these are all equal to zero, forgot to mention that. So if I was now going to apply FOIL, would that give me my original problem back? 
and x times 2x give you 2x squared, negative 4 times negative 2 gives you positive 8, and you can double check the middle term so that works. So now I have this as a times b equals 0, right? a times b equals 0. So therefore I can say that either a equals 0 or b equals 0. So now we can simply just write x minus 4 equals 0 or 2x minus 2 equals 0. Alright, so now I'll just add 4. x equals 4, or here I can just add the 2. So I get 2x equals 2, divide by 2, x equals 1. So therefore, those are your two answers. Yep. Make sense? Hmm. Alright. Um, these are...